Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well. So this is Radhika here again. Uh, first of all, wish you all a very happy new year. I know it's been a long time since I posted anything online. So I've really been busy with a lot of illness in the family. Um, I don't know, the new year has been like this. A lot of uh, illnesses and things coming up in everyone's life at least that's what I've noticed around me um, so yeah maybe a lot of things are healing um, so yeah so today's video is going to be about uh, shadow work um, so shadow work is uh, a technique that I mentioned in one of my other videos to heal trauma and um, it's a it's a technique which um, it, which actually takes uh, some time because you have to think about it you have to stop yourself and kind of analyze in your mind uh, how you are what you are what makes you who you are um, so yeah it, it takes some time and the best thing to do in this technique is not to fool yourself and that's also a very difficult thing because we are our brains are wired to kind of fool ourselves a lot of time um, so yeah, anyways, this technique was suggested by Carl Jung, who was a psychiatrist, who was a psychologist, and um, uh, a lot of his theories are very famous. Uh, I haven't read him exclusively, but I've just read like parts of his work. Um, so yeah, this technique was suggested by Carl Jung, and it was suggested to um, completely accept uh, it was suggested as a way to completely accept yourself um, and then later on once you have accepted yourself to let go of that ego um, so so yeah it's a it's a pretty interesting technique and it actually aligns a lot with a lot of spiritual practices which uh, tell you to let go of your ego but uh, Carl Jung was a psychologist, so he approached it from a psychiatric point of view. So that's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, so the technique is this, that um, like to go into some detail of it, since the time we are born, when we are when we are a newborn baby or when anyone is a newborn baby, they don't have a sense of ego. They have a sense of oneness because they don't know who they are. They don't know who the external world is. So for them, everything is uh, confusion, but everything is one. There is no structure. There is no understanding of this is my body. That is my mother. That is my father. That's the external world. Um, so a baby is not aware of these things. But as a baby grows up, and we all have been babies at some time. So as we all grew up, we started developing this sense of ego. And uh, that is just the way the society operates. So we get a name. Uh, we get some... So we might like a particular toy more than the other. And uh, people around us, like our parents or uh, whoever, will start saying, Oh, they like this toy. So we take that to be a part of our personality the toy is more related to me because i like it and so slowly like this we start forming our identity or our ego and um, ego everyone has an ego only probably uh, a completely enlightened person might not have an ego they have transcended their ego um, and they have experienced the oneness um, so yeah um, so basically, this is how we form an ego. Now, what Carl Jung said is along with the ego, we all are aware of the ego. But along with the ego, we also form another thing which is like a reflection of the ego, but only on the negative spectrum. So it is something called as the shadow. So a shadow is a all parts of our personality which we have demonstrated at some part uh, of our life in some part of our life but because of some reason 
uh, we were told or we assumed or we came to the conclusion that this this part or this expression or this behavior or this quality that I have expressed from myself from my potential is not good and because it is not good I have to separate that from me uh, so so basically all of those qualities that have that you have expressed at some point in your life but which you have decided due to whichever factor maybe it is someone telling you that's not a good thing to do maybe you see it in society that's not a good thing to do maybe maybe you just realize it's not a good thing to do so you leave it and when you leave it it goes and becomes a part of your shadow and uh, when it becomes a part of your shadow it is still a part of you but it is a part which subconsciously we are denying or we are ignoring or we feel that we are not that so um, basically we have experienced it but at a very deep level we have ignored it or we have decided to not make it a part of our experience so we are denying it uh, so it's a part of denial actually um, so let me give you an example so say there is a boy uh, when he's young he's very smart he's intelligent he's hard working but also he has a temper and he has a way of expressing anything that he feels and maybe his expressions are not very refined because he's just a boy and maybe the expressions are a bit crude the way he expresses himself um, so what happens is he gets uh, uh, he gets this feedback from his surroundings so maybe his parents and his teachers and his friends or whoever are around him they always appreciate him for being smart intelligent um, hard working etc but they always uh, reprimand him for being uh, angry or for expressing the things he feels or his emotions um, so what happens is as time goes by he realizes that i don't like being reprimanded or i don't like being i don't like getting this feedback from my environment so what i'm going to do is i'm going to not be angry anymore i'm not going to uh, express my emotions anymore and uh, the problem that happens is when when someone reprimands someone or when someone asks someone to not do a particular thing uh, the explanation most of the time is not very clear because the child might feel that i'm being um, I'm being scolded for being angry whereas the person might be scolding the child because the child was cruel to someone when they were angry so the child might take this out of the scolding that I should not be angry maybe the person who who uh, told the child that you know they should not behave this way they meant that don't be cruel when you're angry um, so because of all this um, confusion or communication gaps between humans it happens that people make their own conclusions especially children or even when they are adults we make our own conclusions and we do not actually understand what the other person is trying to convey to us and we take a different meaning out of it so maybe the child he thinks being angry is bad or expressing my uh, expressing my emotions is not good because I'm hurting people by doing it so slowly over time he starts suppressing this part of his personality which is expressive which is emotive which is showing his emotions and what he does is instead of to suppress it further what he what uh, the coping mechanism that he might come up with is uh, maybe being sarcastic because that is accepted um or maybe you know stuffing his mouth eating eating a lot so these are some of the coping mechanisms that we come up with and we are so unaware of these coping mechanisms because when they happened we were not even aware that we were doing this but 
we do this and i see people doing this so so this was my example that say this child who uh, so this child now has formed two parts of his ego one is his ego in which he has put uh, these qualities of being smart intelligent hard working and along with that he has fragmented or fractured his ego and he has started forming this other part of his ego which is the shadow which he wants to keep distance from or which he wants to deny or uh, which he wants to ignore completely which is being maybe uh, being temperamental or maybe having emotions or uh, ex being expressive in his emotions and because he is denying this part of his shadow it has made what has the side effect of that has been that he has added some more parts in his ego which are being sarcastic and maybe because he started eating a lot maybe he started gaining weight and maybe he started becoming you know like uh, an overweight kid so being overweight is another um, part that he might have added in his ego as a side effect of his of the shadow that he created um so that's what uh, happens and this is a very subconscious or unconscious process no one actually does it uh, um while while being completely aware of it if you are completely aware of it then probably you are very close to enlightenment and you will not have an ego and you will not have a shadow but if you if you look back in your life and if you do shadow work you will find some qualities that you put in your ego and some qualities which you put in your shadow um so yeah so how do you find out what is your ego and what is your shadow um so what are the qualities that you hate in other people what are the qualities that get you triggered and many times these qualities are in some people who are very very close to us and uh, the reason we get more triggered by these people is because these are the people who caused us to fracture our own ego <laughs> because these are the people we value the most like family or loved ones or friends or someone who's very close to you and uh, these are the people who are themselves not enlightened themselves very unconscious and that is why they have an ego and a shadow and they caused you to have an ego and a shadow as well so sub so subconsciously you are aware that this is the person who has caused me to trigger my identity uh, sorry to fracture my identity and that's why you get extra triggered by these kind of people so so notice that who triggers you the most um and what about them triggers you the most so this is uh, for loved ones um but if you if you also notice just in your day to day dealings or just in your life in general um what are the qualities of other people that you judge the most so uh narrow down on these qualities and then you enquire within within yourself maybe just jot them down on a piece of paper and um then you enquire within yourself that did i have these qualities in me at some point in my life um and if i did why did i leave them behind why did i come to the conclusion that um this is not a good quality to have uh, in me or in others or why did i judge this quality why did i say this is bad um who made them leave who made you leave these qualities was it your school or was it your family or was it you yourself who decided that i'm going to leave this because this is not um helping me in any way um so once you reason all these out um you will have like more of a more of an understanding about these qualities that trigger you so it is really not the people who have these qualities who trigger you it is these qualities in those people who trigger you um 
so yeah so basically once you realize all the these things uh, you will realize that what you hate in others or what you judge in others or what gets you triggered when you see other people's behavior those qualities were once a part of you maybe not in a full blown way like they are in the other person but it could be a part of it was a part of that quality was a part of you and if you are an extremely sensitive person then even a small fraction of that quality in you might have given you the understanding that this is not a good quality and i should leave it and you could have left it so for example you might hate people who control other people who who are always trying to control other people um uh who are complete control freaks but if you go back in your life you will find that there will be some time in your life when you were trying to control something maybe an outcome maybe your own body image maybe your uh, friends or family's reaction to your spouse you might have been trying to control some part of something and that might have given you a bad experience or after having done that after having trying tried to control something you might have realized that this is a really bad thing controlling because that's that leads to disasters in in future if it goes unchecked you know having to control everything all the time and uh, trying to gain power over everyone all the time it leads to disasters and you have realized that and that's why you might have left that aspect of control and you might have put it in your shadow because you are judging it now so that's why when you see a control freak it triggers you because you go back subconsciously to that memory of you having tried to control something um so yeah so this is how it works um so yeah once you have realized um your shadow and your ego and ego is basically things you like in other people so if uh, if i'm an easy going person i don't uh, judge others i don't care i'm i'm like okay we can go for food anywhere i don't mind thai cuisine or indian cuisine or american or burgers etc and you have someone like that with you you like that person <laughs> and you like that person because you find that they are easy going too so you you find that a part of uh, a quality that you have included in your ego they have also included in their ego so because you are finding a similarity there you are liking them so that's a part of your ego being easy going um so so basically that's that's how you can also realize what is a part of your ego and what is a part of your shadow so once you have realized what is your ego and what is your shadow and this will happen in parts because as human beings we have infinite potential so we have the potential to have every quality in the world and um, so yeah so it's going to be difficult to actually find um the entirety of your ego and the entirety of your shadow in one go you can you you will have to find it out over your entire lifetime um so yeah so once we have found this out what do we do so we realize that we have over time in life fractured our own ego and uh, we have denied part of ourselves uh in some way uh so we have denied that so i have denied that part of me which wants to control because i have judged it i have said that no if you try to control something that's not good but um so basically that's what happens we have a fractured ego and energetically because this is an energetic reality it's created by energy what happens is we keep seeing these fractured parts of our ego 
in different people because everything depends on your perspective everything depends on how you see it reality is just a perspective right there's nothing like a, a ground truth reality everyone has a different perspective on reality and that perspective uh the perspective that we get is often through our shadow and other times it is through our ego so whenever we are liking something it is mostly because we identify with it mostly because it is a part of our ego and so we like it many times when we hate something it is because it is a part of our shadow because it's a part uh, it's a fractured part of our ego that we have denied um so yeah so basically we keep seeing these things in our reality a lot of times we keep we keep getting people who are triggering us uh, sometimes we get people who are who we feel are like uh, saviors or who who just make our day and um, who uplift us because they are kind of like part of our ego um so what happens is uh, these all appear in our path so that we can integrate them and they appear in our life so we integrate them and we can move ahead on our path and they are all appearing to actually tell us something but they don't tell us the thing directly we have to kind of um, it's like a mystery you have to solve it and you have to uh, think about it deeply like why is this happening to me Wh what is this trying to teach me and then once you go into the details of that you will kind of start getting your answers um so yeah so similar uh, like in the example that i have given you this this uh, boy who was in that example when he grows up he might start critically judging people who speak their mind or uh, who express anger or who express uh, uh, or who are lazy or easy going you know not as hard working as he is so so that's what happens that's how people become super judgmental because they have uh, they have a supremely fractured ego they have a supremely fractured identity where they are extreme they love some parts of uh, who they think they are and they hate what they are not and what they are and what they are not is actually one because uh, as a human you have potential to have every quality imaginable <laughs> and it is impossible that you are not potent of having a particular quality um so it's it's sad that people who have a very strong ego they never realize this they have a very strong sense of who i am and that sense of who i am is unshakable so they never ask the question the real question of who am i they never go into that introspection they always know who they are um so yeah so if if you are um accepting or if you are willing to do shadow work so what do we do now now we know what is shadow work now we know how to identify the shadow and the ego and say you have identified a few qualities in your shadow and a few qualities in your ego so then what do you do so the answer is simple <laughs> the answer is you accept it you accept your ego and you accept your shadow and you be aware of it that's the only thing that you need to do um so so it 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 gets kind of confusing because what does acceptance mean so acceptance means not denying that's all acceptance means it just means being aware of it that it exists and you don't have to judge it or you don't have to act on it so for example um in the example that i used above when the boy supposing he decides to accept his shadow and his ego self does he suddenly become lazy or does he suddenly start getting angry on people and destroying people with his anger so the answer is no the answer is that he keeps doing whatever is in his best judgment the right thing for him to do but 
it means that he does not deny being angry he does not deny being emotional he does not deny um you know sometimes not wanting not just being lazy sometimes because that's also a part of human nature being angry is also a part of human nature maybe he was cruel sometimes being cruel is also a part of human nature does that mean we keep uh, being cruel no that doesn't mean we keep being cruel it just means that we accept that okay once in my life i was angry and i did not know how to process my anger properly and so i was cruel i was cruel to people i loved and i accept that and it was a part of my ego it is probably a part of my ego which can show up again but i am taking all the steps i can so that it doesn't happen again but do i hate that part of me that got angry and cruel no i don't hate that part of me i accept it as me so what happens is with shadow work it helps us in many ways the first way it helps us is we learn to accept ourselves completely wholly you know in not having anyone else's opinion on who you are you have to accept yourself completely with all the goods all the bads and all the in betweens the entire spectrum you have to accept yourself as you are and you have to know that okay i am not perfect now i am probably never going to be perfect but my perfection is in the act that i do which is of always trying to perfect myself or always trying to improve myself that is my perfection that is my definition of perfection you are always trying to improve that's perfect you know <laughs> you don't need anything else it's not about the end result it's about the journey you know of improving yourself and uh, then the second good thing in shadow work is that once we learn to accept ourselves we learn to accept others so we will not judge others for being the way they are because we will feel that oh you know what i was like this once and after that i learned so much and so i am here today but this person is here this person is over here in in the timeline so after some time they will be here where i am now and uh, so it it will give you um it will give you more of a non judgmental view of other people who might not be at the same level where you are today um then the third point it helps you with is with a continued practice of this of shadow work because it's it's not a one time thing that you do it's a it's a lifelong practice so what it will do is it will slowly you will once you start doing this you will start experiencing an expansion of your consciousness you will start feeling uh oneness with everything around you you will start understanding the mechanics of things you will start understanding um the algorithms of things how things work how how a particular why a particular thing is happening what is the result for which it is happening and you will just start to understand all the secrets of life uh, because you are not judging and you are not dividing anymore your judging and dividing mind is not working like that anymore your judging and dividing mind quiets down and uh, the mind, the other part of your brain which is uh, which is more exp- which is more creative or which is more um, which has a feeling of oneness or compassion and empathy that increases and once that increases something shifts in your mind because you are not dividing things anymore to understand but you are trying to get a, like a holistic understanding of things you will understand things to a much higher degree um and even more in detail even though you are not dividing it um so yeah so those are all the things that will happen 
when you start um, doing shadow work. Uh, so yeah, this was my explanation of it. And if you want to read about it, you're more than welcome. There's a lot of resources on the internet, um, a lot of other videos on YouTube too. Um, so yeah, that was this video about shadow work and I hope this helps you. And if you like this, please do like, share, subscribe and comment. And again, I wish you all a very happy new year and I wish you all a lot of love and a lot of light. Thank you. Bye.